Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. I'm here to tell you about Bolin Branch sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% replied that Bolin Branch sheets get softer with every wash. They're made from the rarest organic cotton and designed to get even softer over time. Try their sheets with a 30-night guarantee plus 15% off your first order with code Odyssey. So head to b o l l and branch.com today. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. I'm Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And I'm Michael Swain of Fog.net. This is a replay of WIBW show The Drive. Here's this week's episode on the 24-7 Sports Podcast Network. Good evening, Wildcat and Jayhawk fans, and welcome to The Drive, sponsored by Briggs Auto Group. I am Tim Fitzgerald at GoPowerCat.com. And the man across the studio from me is the, the Michael Swain of Fog.net. And, uh, Michael, how about that Super Bowl? That was remarkable. Oh, incredible game. So happy for the team that won, bummed for the team that lost. Yeah, yeah. That, that one play where the play went oh, all, yeah, that was incredible. Do hickey. Anyhow, we taped this before the game, if you can't tell. But you can interact with us on social media at facebook.com slash the drive show, on Twitter at the drive 13. And, of course, answer our weekly poll question and make your game predictions on our Twitter page. And remember, if you ever miss an episode, of the drive you can listen to an audio only version that will appear each monday morning in the form of a podcast at gopowercat.com and fog.net and we start things off with our two minute drill the two minute drill is the first segment is sponsored by vanderbilt's your work boot center well kansas had a big week going 2-0 with wins over texas and oklahoma the teams that are leaving the conference good job jayhawks michael what have the jayhawks done to right the ship after their brief struggles uh, i mean fits brief this is the first time under bill self that the jayhawks had lost four or five conference games that was this time last week and now all of a sudden you're looking at kansas being in a good spot in the big 12 title race and a part of that is because they've kind of changed their style for much of the season Kansas was a team that shot a lot of threes. Grady Dick, Jalen Wilson, even Kevin McCullough was taking a lot of three-point attempts. What has happened now is they've really cut down on that and they've become a team that is attacking the paint. They don't have a traditional center, so they're not doing it through post-ups, but they're attacking off the dribble. They're using pick and rolls to get to the rim and finish. And if you look at the numbers, KU's basically cut their three-point numbers in half. For most of the season, they've averaged about 23 pointers per game. This past week, they averaged 10 per game, with most of them coming from Grady Dick and Jalen Wilson. DeWan Harris made an occasional one on Saturday, but I think overall, this is a team now that is really learning that it doesn't have to rely on jump shots, and they're becoming a Bill Self team, which is gritty. They're going to the rim, they're going to attack, they're gonna get to the free throw line, and the evolution of this team is what has allowed them to now be in a position where they can kind of control their own destiny if they went out, they will at least share the Big 12 title, if not win it outright. And I think you got to give credit to someone like Juwan Harris taking it upon himself to be much more aggressive. For most of the season, he's been kind of a passive player, who he is as a basketball player. He likes to pass, create for others. He's not one that wants to take shots. And what he's done now is he's attacking the rim. He's getting to his float game that he didn't use a whole lot for most of this season that was so potent last year. He scored in double digits in three of the last four games, and he's someone that if he ever scores in double digits, Kansas is going to win. They are 19-0 in his Kansas career when he scores in double digits. That's going to be the stat to watch going forward because if he's out there scoring, you feel good about Katie's ability to have Jalen Wilson score and then have either Grady Dick, Kevin McCullough, or KJ Adams getting double digits as well. So overall, you're seeing this team evolve, and I think they're attacking the rim more, which is just a much more efficient way to play basketball when your three-point shot can be inconsistent. 
Yeah, I mean, it's amazing uh, the way Bill Self can adjust his team and, and get them to do other things midstream has always been impressive, but he consistently gets that done. Yeah, and one thing, Fitz, over the final 15 minutes of the game on Saturday, they shot 70% from two. That's, Just, that's pretty good. You're going to win a lot of basketball games doing that, I'll tell you that much. I didn't see that in Lubbock. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's talk about that, Fitz. It's never easy to win on the road in the Big 12. So how much does Kansas State loss on Saturday at Texas Tech sting? It stings a lot um, because this wasn't really about Texas Tech playing at a high level, you know, defending its home court, defending its honor, finding, you know, being the scrappy underdog, finding a way to win. This was because K-State stunk. I mean, there's no other way around it. I hate to be that blunt with it, but K-State had 23 turnovers. Most of those turnovers were unforced, just sloppy, careless, trying to make things happen when there wasn't a play there, overpassing, dribbling into situations that they continue to dribble into and getting getting trapped and double teamed. Uh, it's it's painful to watch this team go through these struggles because it's it's not players coming off the bench that are sloppy with the ball. It's your two most significant players. Over the last two games, Kansas State has 38 turnovers. 38 turnovers in these two games combined, and 24 of them have been from Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel, your two best players. The players you want to have the ball in their hands are turning it over at a high rate. It's got to get solved for Kansas State. And on top of that, they had open looks throughout this game. They just shot it poorly. And sometimes you're going to shoot it poorly, but you can make up with that with defense and rebounding and other things and find a way to fight your way to victory. And Kansas State didn't do that. They just simply weren't efficient enough in anything. And while their defense in the half court was actually pretty good, the problem was those 23 turnovers. As Jerome Tang said after the game, it's hard to defend when you're turning the ball over and giving it to the other team in a good situation. In fact, Texas Tech scored 28 points off of those turnovers, just shredding K-State. Whenever K-State turned it over, they were about ready to cash it in. And that's a great way to lose a road game to a team that was now, that is now, 2-10 in the conference. Yeah, this isn't a very good Texas Tech team, but on Saturday, even without a great effort from the Red Raiders, maybe it was better than usual, K-State still found a way to lose a game that it should have won. And this one will sting a lot for quite a while, Michael, because this one's going to impact. Even though it's a quad one loss, I think the committee will know this was not a good loss. Yeah, and I think that for so much of the season we talk about, you know, K-State controlling the game and not making those mistakes. And to see it come in now at a crucial part of the season is definitely a little bit concerning. Yeah, it's time to make some adjustments because – the, uh, the defense has adjusted. Now K-State needs to counter, mm -hmm. just like we talked about with KU. Michael, Texas and Oklahoma will officially leave the Big 12 after the 23-24 academic year. See me smiling? Are you as happy that this saga is finally over with? Because I am. Yeah, I am, Fitz. And I think to some degree it's nice to have closure, right? You know when this is going to end. And as I left Lloyd Noble Center on Saturday, I kind of wondered aloud, like, is this the last time I'm going to watch a Kansas basketball at Oklahoma game? Just interesting, and it's an interesting dynamic now that you wonder, okay, what is next year's basketball schedule going to look like? We know what the football schedule is going to look like. You know, we know Kansas will get one more shot to go beat Texas in Austin, but they're never going to go play in Norman in football again. So I'm happy it's over. I think for the Big 12, it's great. They're going to get some money back. Um, obviously, I don't think it's as much as they could have gotten. I think, I believe, it's maybe $150 million that they could have gotten, and instead they get $100 million. Still, a good situation. Brett Yormark neg negotiated a really good deal where they get over this over with early and now they can go and look and expand more and thread some of the reports nationally. It sounds like the Big 12 now will focus on an, a second wave of realignment, which I think adding more talented teams and, and more talented programs, think about maybe like an SMU that's good in football, decent in basketball, things like that. That's exciting for me. Well, I'm, I'm happy it's over. I, I really am. I, I wish it was over right now mm. as, after this season because uh, you know, this is a divorce, and it's the divorce has happened, but we're still living together, and it's not very fun. You know, in, in hindsight, knowing that this deal was probably going to get done, the fact that Kansas State and Oklahoma don't play one final time is really disappointing. The fact, you know, that that's a team that got left off of K-State's schedule during this, you know, realignment of 14 teams. But um, this needs to happen. I mean, this, this, this can't go on. 
between Texas is, is a horrible business partner. They have been. And now that you're finally getting rid of them, you're so happy you can't wait till they go out the door. And if you're a Texas fan, you're like, but we're the whole conference. No, you weren't. You never were. In fact, if you go back through the history, the Big 8 saved your butt by including four teams from the Southwest Conference into the Big 12. And uh, Texas has been a pain in the butt the whole time. And now they're the SEC's problem. We wish you luck. We, we don't really care. We don't, we don't care. Have, have fun with them. Now, a quick look at your poll question results. The poll questions are brought to you by Midland Exteriors. Love the home you live in. Call today for a free estimate. All right, Fitz. Well, last week's question was, we are at the halfway point of the Big 12 season. Who should win the Big 12 Player of the Year award? Jalen Wilson was the resounding yeah. winner with 82%. Keontae Johnson got 16%. Keontae George got 2%. And I'm very sorry for Marcus Carr, who got 0%. Uh, Marcus, you need to talk to your agent. You're not <laughs> getting enough exposure. Here's this week's question. With six, six games to play, who should be the front runner for the Big 12 Coach of the Year? Here's your choices. Iowa State guy, K-State guy, Texas guy, KU guy. You know their names. Well, you may not know Kitty Perry's name. <laughs> Um, Katy Perry is not related to Katy Perry. Michael told me that at the start of the show, so that's good. But you can vote on our Twitter page, at the Drive 13 Please do that. Uh, get me out of this segment, Michael. Help me. All right, well, that will do it okay. for this half of the two-minute drill, but we'll be right back with more on KU and K-State on The Drive. My days working and taking care of my little ones can be a lot. I checked out care.com and it was so easy for me to find local, experienced, and background check sitters. Finding our babysitter was way more affordable than I thought. Care.com makes it super easy. Search for qualified candidates. You can view their profiles, read reviews and ratings, check their availability, send messages directly, and get the help that you need. Care.com should be every person's go-to. Welcome back to The Drive, fueled by BriggsAuto.com. Welcome back as we continue our weekly two-minute drill. This segment of the two-minute drill is sponsored by Copeland Insurance Agency, part of your community for more than 60 years. Ernest Uday Jr. has come on strong the last few weeks. What has changed to alter the trajectory of his freshman season, Michael Swain? Well, I think you have to be ready for your moment, especially in college basketball, and he's been that. You think about his trajectory this season. He starts the year as KU's first big man off the bench when Norm Roberts was the coach. Man, that feels like a year ago, but it was this season. And then all of a sudden, through kind of the end of non-conference playing into Big 12 play, he just didn't play. He saw the floor for maybe a handful of minutes here and there, and then all of a sudden he's come on with Zuby Ejiofor and Zach Clements both being hurt, and he's been ready for his moment. And I think what he's brought is the lobs, as you saw if you're watching on TV. KU does not have that vertical threat on its roster. KJ Adams can dunk the ball, but he's not someone that's going to go dunk over people while catching a lob, a la Yudoka Azubuki a few years ago. And I think that's the biggest thing that he brings is that Yudoka as Boogie like impact on the game. He's gonna throw down lobs. He can block shots in the interior. For me, this is the most fraudulent box score I've ever seen in my life for him at Oklahoma. He got credited with two steals and two blocks when he had about three or four steals and easily four blocks. I don't know what the scorekeepers were doing, but it was an incredibly impactful performance from him in Norman. And for a player who, again, was not playing at the start of Big 12 play, it shows incredible improvement. And Bill Self talked about his change in approach. Uday's a fun-loving guy. He's goofy. He's into doing TikTok videos, social media. Even leaving the arena on Saturday, he's the guy with the boombox playing loud music. But when it comes time to hunker down and get to basketball and focusing on the in and out of the game, Bill Self has said that he's improved. And I think you've seen that on the floor when he's out there now. He's not trying to make plays happen. He's letting the game come to him. And when there are plays to be made, he's there for it. He's not trying to go outside of himself. And I think that's the type of growth that you love to see from a big man and some of that Kansas will need down the stretch. They're going to need him in Tuesday in Stillwater. They'll need him next week against Baylor. The Big 12 has so many great big men that they need someone to help KJ Adams, who continues to get in foul trouble, but that's beside the point. Uday's story has been great for Kansas, and it's really exciting when you think about the years to come when you think about his own personal development. Yeah, I mean, when Bill Self has a big guy like that, he does so much with him. He makes the most of it, and that's that's a big part of why KU is surging right now is he's got his big man going. 
100%. All right, Fitz, let's transition to Kansas State offensive coordinator Colin Klein, who was offered the same position at Notre Dame, but chose to stay in Manhattan. How big of a win was this for K-State? Really significant. And, you know, your average fan probably doesn't realize how close this was to Colin Klein heading out of town. And it was really close as of Thursday night. And keep in mind, this developed very quickly. Um, we learned about it on Wednesday. And by Thursday, not only did we learn that the information had gotten out in Notre Dame, that also that Colin Klein was there. He was interviewing right then. Um, and... So as I went to bed Thursday night, Colin Klein was gone. I didn't think there was any way he would stay. The money was unmatchable. The, the offer from Notre Dame, we still don't know what it was, but we know this. The guy he was replacing was getting paid $2 million a year, and he's under $1 million at Kansas State. Now I imagine Kansas State that had moved him up some here this spring was prepared to move him up into that million-dollar range. But still you're talking about, you know, 50% increase, 100% increase in your salary. That's a lot of money. And to put coach at Notre Dame. Now, there were some factors here that I never thought would work for Colin Klein at Notre Dame. But one of them was, honestly, leaving Manhattan, Kansas, where he has put down really deep roots with he and his wife and, and their many children. They have a lot of things going on in Manhattan, including family that has moved to Manhattan to be with them. And to uproot all of that to go to South Bend just didn't make a lot of sense. And also lingering around the veneer football complex is the fact that um, Scotty Hazelton left after one season and went to Michigan State. And the general belief is, and I don't want to mean to speak for Scotty, is that he regrets the decision. He lost that family feel that he had in Manhattan, Kansas, and is getting paid more for more of a job. So, you know, I think Colin Klein realized that he was in demand. Alabama called him about their offensive coordinator job. Other schools had called him about their offensive coordinator job. And he chose to stay at K-State because that's home. Now, you're going to have to pay these guys. You can't get by on the hometown discount forever. But Colin Klein was really close to going, and he didn't. And it's huge for K-State because I got news for you folks. There's a good chance if Colin had gone, Avery Johnson would have followed him. And that would have been awful. That for Colin and for the K-State program. 100% fits. And I think, too, look at the state of Kansas. Two $1 million offensive coordinators. There's some uh, interesting offensive minds in this state right now. This marketplace is amazing. It's just unbelievable how much these guys get paid, but good for them. And now we step out of bounds, and Out of Bounds is brought to you by Dara's Corner Market. We love local, and we are local for you. All right, let's return to the departure of Oklahoma and Texas. But this time, let's ask if it's time for Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark to expand further. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I, I think we can all recognize that probably the Big 12 uh, wants to get to 16, but not just for the number, but for the right mix of schools. Uh, and that might actually hold them back finding the right mix of schools because they kind of need one more school out east. Um, maybe it's possible that um, they'll, they'll find that school. I don't know what that is right now. But here's the issue. The pac 12s in deep, deep trouble. They cannot sell their media rights for anything near what they think they're worth because, let's be honest, the pac 12 is totally disconnected from reality and what they are worth. Um, so as they shop around their media rights, it's become very clear that they won't make as much money as the Big 12. But if they do, if they find the way to do it, that'll be streaming rights for, like Amazon, to take all of their rights. So Pac-12 football would be on Amazon. Pac-12 basketball would be on Amazon. That's it. And that's not enough exposure for these schools either. So I think the Pac-12 is going to break up. And it's just a matter of time before couple schools I would suspect it's going to be Arizona and Arizona State petition for membership and then all you know it'll break loose and the choice at that point will be who do we want out of this conference who helps and Oregon and Washington are the big dogs but Michael they also are eyeing the Big Ten constantly do you really want to bring them in with the threat of them leaving at any moment my personal choice is be Arizona Arizona State and then San Diego State or UNLV just because it's UNLV and then Colorado. And I was opposed to Colorado, Michael, but the hiring of Deion Sanders indicates that they've decided to get serious about football again, mm. something they haven't been. 
they haven't really wanted to be good. They just wanted to field a team. Now they want to be good. If you want to take it seriously, then the Big 12 might take you seriously too. Yeah, and, and Colorado's made a lot of concessions to Deion Sanders in terms of the transfer policy that they had, the money that they're willing to spend. I'd throw Utah out there too. Yep. Really good football. And then you get that Utah-BYU rivalry. And how many times on the show have we talked about wanting to get more rivalries in the Big 12 that when you're scrolling on a Black Friday, you all of a sudden you see Utah-BYU. You yep. want to stop and watch that. And I agree. I'm interested to see what they do. I think Gonzaga as a basketball school addition will be fascinating. But without football, it's really hard to have that make sense because, again, football really is the driving force of all of this. Yeah, keep in mind this. Um, they might add basketball schools. There might be a whole layer of like, adding four more basketball schools only. And then everyone is keeping an eye on the ACC. When their mm -hmm. TV contract's up, everyone believes that that conference will come apart at the seams. And the Big 12 doesn't want to be overloaded. I think we're looking at three 20-team conferences eventually. And that's going to be a little bit much. But somehow, some way, the Big 12 will be one of them. Well, now let's hear from our fans. Our fan question is sponsored by Metalark Retirement Awaits in Manhattan, where you can live your way every day. Our fan question this week is... All right, Fitz, is Kansas State broken? And this is yes. from Tom in Topeka. Yes, Tom. They're broken right now, and they need to unbreak themselves. They need to solve these things. And Marquise Noel owned it, and I appreciated that. He said, I'm, I'm trying to make too much happen. I'm trying too hard. Just let it flow to you. You mentioned it in the KU segment. Just let the game come to you, and you're going to be okay. You can see both of these guys trying too hard. Just let it go. Just let it flow, and you're going to be okay. Yep, and remember to ask us your questions on our Facebook page and on Twitter at The Drive 13. When we return, we will look at our predictions here on The Drive. Welcome back to The Drive, fueled by BriggsAuto.com. It's time to head down the home stretch of this week's show, and now it's time to look at your predictions. Predictions are brought to you by Kites and Kites Aggieville Draft House. Meet your friends at Kites and the Draft House since 1954. Remember to make your weekly predictions on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. Here are last week's results. Michael Swain is waking up and yes, making sir. this a competition. Look at that. Look at those numbers. Look how bad I was. I gotta, gotta stop picking K State. <laughs> Michael went three and zero. Here's this week's picks. We're gonna start with. Kansas and Oklahoma State, we put it in as a pick em. I want to take the pokes. I'll take KU. I think they'll keep it rolling. And then next up, we'll go Iowa State at K-State. K-State, three-and-a-half-point favorite. I'll take Iowa State. Yeah, it's hard to pick Iowa State on as a road team, but mm. K-State kind of stunk the last game. I'll take K-State, though. And our last game of the week is Baylor at Kansas. We put Kansas in as a four-and-a-half-point favorite. I'm taking the Jayhawks. Yeah, I am, too. Losing. Like Baylor's really good, but they're not losing. Again, make your picks on our Twitter page at the Drive 13. And now, now, folks, it's time for our on the clock segment. On the clock, sponsored by Carpet One, by local for a strong local community. And we start with Michael Swain of Fog.net. Well, when Lance Leipold signed his new contract, KU committed to putting more money into the football program and into the coaching salaries. And as we revealed on Fog.net this past week, KU's committed about a million dollars more to his assistants per year heading forward compared to last year. Incredible money being put into the assistant coaches who help drive this football program forward. And when you look long-term, it's gonna help bring in more attractive assistants when the current ones move on. So really huge for Kansas to have that sort of investment in football. Well, speaking of investing in football, there was a man, it was actually a couple, that did that in the early years of Bill Snyder, and they helped change the future and the very uh, football program that they loved. Well, this weekend, Jack Veneer passed away. His wife, Donna, had passed earlier uh, within the last year or so. They were titans of K-State, but the most humble, kind people, generous beyond belief. They shared their money, and they shared goodness with everyone they met. They're wonderful people. I've been honored to know them for a very, very long time. Jack was the type of guy that you would never know that he was one of the wealthiest men in Kansas when you shook his hand because he was a humble man with a humble presentation, but he was good to everyone he was around. Rest easy, Jack. Love you, brother. And that's it for this week's edition of The Drive. We will see you next week right here and all week on social media. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, 
lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562-314-4603 for complete details. Spring training is right around the corner, which means it's time to start prepping for the fantasy baseball season. Join us on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, four times per week in January as part of the CBS Sports Podcast Network. Scott White, Chris Towers, and me, Frank Stample, will be delivering the latest news, rankings, and strategies in just five minutes. Make sure to download and follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the Odyssey app, and everywhere else podcasts are found.